<laughs> How's everybody doing? Okay. Listen, I'm a little mad at y'all. No love for donations. You have to understand that this is an exchange of energy. Money, money is an exchange of energy. I'm providing content. You should provide donations because it's an exchange of energy. The universe doesn't reward things that don't happen in an exchange. Someone, one of you guys, said that very eloquently, that it is an exchange of energy. And that's why it took long to do part two. If this continues, I have to discontinue altogether. You have to understand that it takes energy to do this. And, and it is a positive outflow into, from the universe. So it needs to be reciprocated. So this is what I'm... And I'm going to Singapore to do a conference. And I'm taking you guys with me. And I'm also going to have the conference taped live and give that to you. I'm giving you content even from another broad. And... I'm also going to make a proposition for you guys. My classes. I'm going to put out one video of my 12 videos for my classes out there for you guys. That way you guys can get to see what type of content I provide when I do the classes. And it's delicious stuff. But it's dangerous. That's why can I have it in the public? I tried, and I've been having problems. I've been sanctioned by everything. YouTube gave me a hard time, and the Illuminati was almost shut me down. So I'm taking a risk. So, you know, compensate me for that risk, because that's what's keeping me active, you know? So it is, a, and it's good karma. So between now and the 10th of June, I would like to see an infusion of three grand on my paypal.com slash the people's astrologer. Don't do the GoFundMe page because that takes a month to, to disseminate out. If you do it through the, the paypal.me slash the people's astrologer, which is my business account, it will go indirectly. Because, you know, daddy got to look good when I go to uh, 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 Europe. Daddy got to look good when I represent you guys. And I'm going to put on this video for you, which is part of my classes, as a as an advertising to see if you like it and also to see if you can handle the content. Now, I will be providing content when I finish the uh, this series. Don't worry. I'm going to go over because I'm doing this announcement. And a lot of you give a lot of advice as to what series to begin. Well, I better see some monetary infusion if I'm going to take you seriously because then that means research, work, you know, I, you know, Virgo, I do things right. So, guys, show some love. If each of you give $2 or $3, well, well you know what, for that you might as well give $10 because it'll cost you $2. <laughs> okay, I'm Virgo. we got to cut the nickels and dimes. It'll cost you about that much to give, to donate that money at the paypal.com that me slash the people's astrologer and i'll provide the link on the description box on this video and then that money will come in directly because then it takes money and i gotta pay staff you know so again it is a reciprocation of energy please donate i would like to see for my twenty thousand subscribers if you all give 10 bucks i should have easy three to five grand and that's enough for me to then invest on the resources I also have books that I've created and other great astrologers and spiritualists have created in a PDF form, which I can send to you guys for free. These books are expensive. I can send that to you for free. So use me in the right way and reciprocate the energy and the love, okay? Okay, enough about that. Now, we are going to conclude this moon series by talking about the moon in Pisces in a woman chart. Part two. I hope you all liked uh, part one. You all seem to have a lot to say about you know what I was discussing concerning the moon series uh, of the moon in Pisces and a woman's chart. Then I tell you it was gonna be a roller coaster. The woman in Pisces versus the man in Pisces. It's different. It's different. It's different. Right? Oh God! I put on this cologne. It's making me sniffle. Not in the good way. Okay, so, you know, let's jump right in. The Moon in Pisces, part two. Uh-huh. Understand, 
that more the woman with the moon in Pisces is almost like a child. Talk about the baby! But then again, it makes sense because from Aries, the baby, you got the child. Pisces. Pisces, uh, Aries precedes uh, Pisces, then Pisces precedes Aries. It is the Alpha and the Omega. So the baby-like character that we see in, in Aries is the reactive aspect of the baby. That's why I say it that way. It's the reactive, fiery, outpouring emotion of the cry of the universe through the Big Bang, which the cry of the baby symbolizes when the moon is in Aries. We see this same concept of the baby in in in, in, uh, in Pisces, in the waters of mutuality, away from the cardinal fire. That's fire, energy. In Pisces, still waters run deep when the moon is in Pisces. Mm. Oh, that just gave me a joke. Oh, when I talk about Pisces, that's why I might have to wear the red because it's rough. It's tough energy. It's the energy. <laughs> no. So, understand. You know, I'm going to miss this series. I enjoy talking about the moon and the signs. <laughs> I'm going to miss it too. I ain't going to lie. I'm going to miss it. <laughs> this was a good series. Thank you, guys. This is on you. Thank you for um, rec uh, convincing me to do the moon series. I don't know which subscriber it was, but there was a particular subscriber that said, do the moon series. And I got a toast to that person. In fact, if you can find out who was that person who uh, recommended to do the moon signs, I'm going to offer my classes for free. All 12 videos for free. But we got to find out who it is. Okay, and my team is already on it. The Bureau is already on it. Okay, so we're going to find out. But that, this was a fantastic moon series. Again, going back to Pisces, the childlike energy becomes more serene, more innocent. What's that? What's that? Gullible, naive, innocent. And it culminates in Libra, this innocence. Open video. We get that first in Pisces, in reactive, reactionary innocence. It culminates in Libra with that kind of reactionary innocence and intellectual curiosity. Uh oh, 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 did you see Pretty Woman with uh, what's her name, with the Scorpio woman and, and Richard Gere? Where he snapped the thing and she's like, ah, oh, remember she's wearing that dress and he snapped that check like she's like, oh, that innocence. Oh, like bitch, then you know they were gonna snap that when you put your finger there, really, bitch, and you know that that innocence. Oh, Famous scene. That's the moon in Libra. But that innocence begins in Pisces. It's deep. And I just got started. <laughs> it is intellectual curiosity of innocence in Libra. But it is emotional, unaware like reaction in Pisces. And in Aries, it's angry, demanding energy. Hey, take care of me. Look at me. I need you. Wow, wow, wow. Fire. Cardinal fire. I demand to be heard and be seen. This is the essence of the fire signs. Okay. Oh, my God. They hit this running, didn't they? Oh, they hit it running. <laughs> <laughs> they hit it running. Here's the thing. The Aries, uh, the Pis the moon in Pisces energy is very childlike and very innocent. Particularly in a reactionary nature. Many Pisces women or women with the moon in Pisces have this... They have this innocence... This innocence about them. 
like they're discovering things for the first time, things that you and I know from childhood and natural childhood pubescence and the whole, you know, aspect of childhood development. We, you, you would think that from that we get to a level of maturity where we know. Well, this seems to be arrested in Pisces. Pisces figure things out late or too early or never at all or a distortion of what it is to be heard or understood or interpreted. And this is true throughout her life. It's like she's always out of step or out of sync with the rest of us. But this is Neptune, the planet that does not belong in our solar system. That's a rogue planet that came from another solar system. So Pisces is functioning according to the dictates that belongs to another solar system that has nothing to do with ours. My heart goes out to Pisces because she really feels like a fish out of water. And in a way, if you're born with the moon in Pisces as a woman, you kind of are. So moon in Pisces women and women with the sun in Pisces too. This applies to you. Don't be bad. Don't feel sad. Don't feel weird or peculiar. Don't think that you're crazy from the rest of us. You are the genius. Your intellect and your wisdom and your emotional intuitive knowledge is, is coming as a gift to us from you. Coming from another solar system, another star system, which even cosmologists agree might be the cause of mystery behind the moon in Pisces. So be more forgiving of yourself. Bitch, you got something to bring into offer. And the polarity point is Virgo. So we too got shit to bring to the table. Pisces and Virgo, we are valuable to humanity, even though humanity discards us. They do. They don't understand us. If it's a man, they don't understand the inner feminine of a man that makes him feminine. If it's a woman, they don't understand her Greta Garbo type of allure, where she, you can't figure her out. They don't appreciate that maybe you can figure yourself out because you've been put in a paradigm that does not even belong to you or is of you. You come from somewhere else. So take ownership of that in your psyche. I know that you're not the square peg in the wheel. And even if you are, then that square peg will be the precept that will revolutionize that wheel in the day of tomorrow. Have you ever thought about it like that? It's all a matter of perspective on how you look at experience. And with the moon in Pisces, experience is relative. And you have to take that with a little mustard seed or grain of salt. Okay? Because at the end of the day, we don't know what is or what can be or what will be the grand scheme of things. This is a mystery. Pisces represents the abyss. The great unknown from which we come from and then ultimately we return. This type of vi mystery also vibrates with the woman born with the moon in Pisces. I'm almost out. Now you all know the drill. I gotta re up. <laughs> I'll be doing videos all day and taking readings all day. So take advantage. I leave to uh, the Asia. In a couple of days. And I got to raise some money. We got to raise some money now. Okay. So having said that. Having said that. You have to understand, if you look at my Pisces videos, uh, how to understand a Pisces woman, I give you four types. 16 subtypes and 32 sub subtypes. Now, again, then I mentioned in the other part one, two of man, and, and, and part one of woman, now this one, that intellect reaches its highest complexity here. So it's almost difficult and impossible to give a full synthesis because in these phases, especially with the moon in Pisces, it becomes a case-by-case -case basis. To, to hit at the particular area that's most valuable as far as 
comprehension as to who you are, why you're here, your relationship to the planet, and what you need to be doing here before you depart and go back to God. You know? It is different for every woman. So, this, like I said, interpretation, interpretation that I'm giving has to be taken with a grain of salt. Because um, there's so much that I, it's impossible for me to cover. You know? Which is why um, I'm just trying to give main pointers. Okay? Uh... With the woman with the moon in Pisces, again, she's childlike. But it depends what kind of child is she putting out there. Is it the Aries child? The Taurian child? The Cancerian child? Remember the the, the, the child? You no, know, the, the, the the Uber, you know, the baby, the Uber, the child, the uh the the kid, the adolescent, the young adult, the different gradients and faces. So, it depends on what kind of inner child is being expressed when you're born with the moon in Pisces. Um, speaking on more mundane terms, the moon with the woman in Pisces, um, she, she can be easily scared of, easily. She, she can be easily scared off by anything. I mean, anything can scare this woman off. That's why she's always referred to as a sparrow. You know? I don't know if I necessarily like that term for Pisces. But many, 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 and I do mean many, astrologers tend to... um agree with the term and using the, the the symbol of the sparrow for Pisces. You know, and if you know anything about the, the bird, the sparrow, you will understand why this could be offensive to the psyche of Pisces. Um, but the behavior of a woman born with a moon in Pisces tend to go that direction. And, and, and so then we have to look at it, you know. Uh, some of the other tendencies born with the moon in Pisces is that she can be easily scared of uh, horror movies, horror scenes. She hates cruelty of all kinds, you know. She's very sensitive in every single way that you can imagine. She doesn't like loud music. She doesn't like aggressive people. You no. Know? She can feel like she's the victim in many situations rather than the one who is the victimizer. You know? Um, God. She, um, she doesn't usually do well in school or at work in her formative years. She gets it together when she matures and gets older. Especially if you're born with the moon in Pisces. Understand that she, despite this, she doesn't seem to have a problem uh, adapting to her environment, whether it's good for her or bad for her. She has a way of adapting to the environment to her own detriment sometimes. This is these are two fishes going in the opposite directions. And they reach a point of balance when they go like this. But then they're going to out of this balance when they pass again. There's a pause when things have an absolute beauty and harmony and imbalance. But then the fishes go, and then we go to that same insane cycle of confusion and paradoxical and quixotic behavior all over again. The things that the water signs are most famous for. Just unpredictable moves, unpredictable behaviors, paradoxical and quixotic behaviors, which are attributed to the water signs. And this is what baffles the air signs, intrigues the fire signs, and invokes compassion with the earth signs. When you are born with the moon in Pisces. I 
understand then that we have um, psychically a woman who, when she becomes intimately involved with someone else in thought and emotion, there is an enmeshment that goes on where she morphs that person into her being. Now, he might not do that with her, but she definitely will be the Lego ego that will blend and mix with the essence of who he is. And if he's not a good person, then she will become not a good person either. You know, which is why it's very important for the woman born with the moon in Pisces to know whom to connect with in that special way. And if she's the type of woman that life enjoys men, then she better do a lot of spiritual baths, a lot of spiritual cleansings every time she's with a guy, so like that the negative essence and energies that she connects, or all women that have sex with men can connect with, especially if the men are random men. Now, this can be disruptive energy to the aura and psyche of a woman. The same for men too. I mean, let me tell you, when I was out there doing my dirty work, you know, I all know I've done porn and I've done all that kind of stuff. I used to do my spiritual baths every single day. And with every partner that I had sex with afterwards, I would do spiritual baths. I would take periods where I don't have sex. I meditate. You know, you're because it's someone else's energy that you're dealing with. And you have to know how to navigate and control those energies and get rid of those energies. The guy may be cute and fine. The woman may be banging and all that. But what is her spiritual essence like? No? Uh, you might, you're going to inherit the dark part and other part of her energy as well as the good part of her energy. And if it's a dude, the same way. So people born with the moon in Pisces have to guard their genetic gene pool when they merge with somebody else. For the most part, this should be true of every and any woman. Guard your vessel. Be careful who you sleep with. Because it ain't about just that cute motherfucker with the salon or the woman with the mm, mm, and the, mm you know? What is the energy behind it? So you have to be very careful and very guarded and very astute, not just intellectually, but spiritually. Okay? So understand that there is a consequence that goes with sex. You know, and especially nowadays, you can't have sex nowadays like you used to back in the days when I was doing it. And when I was doing it, it was dangerous and bad enough. Now it's much, much, much worse. There's so much stuff out there that can kill you out here that it's better to just stick to pornography on the internet and allow your imagination to do all the jerking. No pun intended. <laughs> because, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very... We're living in a balsamic end of the uh, Piscean age. The balsamic period of any age is always the most dangerous. Because it is here where we see a total dismantling of our society and of our way of life as determined by that epoch, the Piscean age. And we're living at the tail end of it. So there's going to be destruction and annihilation on every level to make room for the incoming God of, that will herald the Aquarian Age. When that happens, all that was Pisces will be gotten rid of, including humans. And there'll be another breed and, and a new heaven and earth. That's what's meant in the Bible, and that there should be a new heaven and earth. That happens repeatedly as we change to the dial in the heavens as we go to different epochs. The same parallel can be seen mundanely down below on Earth with people's individual lives. Pisces represents endings and beginnings, the Alpha and the Omega. These are cycles and phases of change, which is why it is suitable that Pisces will be immutable, which means changeable. Water sign. Without Pisces, we will be stuck in the same age, in the same epoch, in the same era, in the same decade, like, like, like a groundhog dog. Every day will be the same. The same. Thank God for the polarity of Pisces and Virgo. Life is a lot more colorful and varied than that. And that same concept, as above, so below, can be also connected to 
the women born with the moon in Pisces. And we're done with this series. It was great knowing you. Goodbye. I hope to see you one day again.